All right, I hope that you can hear me. It's a little bit windy here in New York City, but I wanted to answer a question um, that one of you posed about how do I make sense of, reconcile being a woman in business and also being a person of faith. I'm a Christian. I'm also um, an ordained clergy person in the United Methodist Church. I know, it's hilarious. <laughs> so here's a little bit about that. For the longest time, I actually thought that uh, money, wealth was evil. I'm just like full disclosure. Uh, this really, really peaked when I was in college because I was studying public policy and political science. And my goal was actually to alleviate poverty at home and abroad. So in my senior year of college, I was in medical processing for the Peace Corps. I had applied, I had interviewed, and I was accepted. I was waiting for my um, deployment, if you will. What country I'd be assigned to in Latin America, that's where they said I was going. But uh, in my senior year, I started to have just this conviction that I wanted to ask a different set of questions about poverty. Because in my mind, it was simply if we had enough money and we gave it to the right people, then the whole thing would just resolve itself. Um, but the deeper I dove into questions about inequality at home, abroad, the more I read church fathers like and mothers um, like St. Teresa and St. Augustine and how we think about relationship with people all across the socioeconomic strata, um, across centuries. It's a matter of relationship and heart. And in particular, I am a United Methodist. So uh, we're kind of a, the flavor of Christianity um, that stems from the teachings of John Wesley. So you could think of Catholic church um, and then Protestant church. And then within the Protestant church, there was the Anglican church of the United, um, United Kingdom. He was an Anglican priest. He came over to the US colonies and that's how Methodism kind of started. They, he wanted to reignite reignite the hearts of the Anglican movement um, and people and he did that United States so that's kind of the the history of how my denomination came to be and so John Wesley preaches that you want to earn as much as you can so that you can save as much as you can by saving he meant living simply he didn't mean um so you can stock up and hoard it or whatever, you know. Uh, so you want to earn as much as you can so that you can save as much as you can, live as simply as you can, in order to give as much as you can. And he took this so seriously. I mean, for um, a, a year, I think he didn't cut his hair because he wanted to give that money to the poor. He decided to drink tea, herbal tea, instead of coffee because it was cheaper. There were so many things that he changed about his own life so that he could be more generous and he could live a life of, of abundance in his giving. And so for me, that is how I reconcile. I also read a lot um, and listen to John Maxwell, who is a Christian, he was a pastor and now he uh, mentors people in business. And just over the years, after meeting Christian business people, I've started to realize that uh, I don't need to live in a world of scarcity. That, um, and if I can stand behind my business. So for me, I partner with Beachbody and I've told you guys this before. I said no to, um, to coaching for nine months because I needed to research Beachbody. I needed to understand particularly Shakeology. So those of you who I'm coaching, you know that um, like you get a free 30 day sample when you sign up with me and you get a challenge pack. And then after that, it's about, uh, so with a discount, it's about $99 a month. And people always say, they're like, Eric, $99. Y'all, when I was a challenger, I was so, I'm going to be honest, I was obnoxious about this. Like, I told my coach, I am not spending $1,000 a year to drink some kind of like frou frou protein shake. I'll go to Costco. Thank you very much. And that's what I thought. But, yeah, one second, baby. But then uh, I started to do some research. So, actually, I drank a knockoff for six months. Um, I, I was harder. right after Ella was born which when I was breastfeeding. And then when, as I started doing my research, I started to realize what was in the shake that I was drinking. Um, and it was a lot of soy fillers. Ella, hush baby, hush. Uh, it was a lot of soy fillers. It was a lot of artificial um, flavors and colors and all kinds of things. And the more I looked into Shakeology, I realized that the price is reflective of several things. Three things, I would say. Um, the quality of the ingredients, um, the the way in which they want to honor, uh, oh, careful, the manufacturing process. And then third is how they want to honor coaches 
who are representative of the company. And so it starts at the, at the beginning, Shakeology supports 20,000 farmers around the world. You could pay those farmers pennies, or you could actually pay them what their hard work and dedication is, is um, worth in order to sustain their families. So for me, it is worth me paying more, the same way that you would pay more for organic food or anything. Um, it is worth me making an investment in those 20,000 farmers. Then it's worth me being a steward over what I'm putting in my body every day. If you are drinking, hey baby, come here, sweet pea. If you are literally consuming something every day in your body, if that's going into your breast milk, it's going into your children, you need to ensure that from the point of soil to what to consumption, that uh, there is there are no shortcuts being taken, right? That it is something that you can drink with um, integrity and uh, in, in calmness, right? Like if I'm literally gonna put this in my child uh, as a breastfeeding mom, I need to know that what I'm doing is safe. Um, so all of each body products are so thoroughly tested from soil to consumption. And then the third is they want to honor coaches. So um, as a coach, you guys know, I make 25% commission on anything that my clients purchase which y'all is not a ton, let's just be honest. I mean, it's like 50 bucks. So when you first sign up with me, uh, I make about $50 to coach you forever. The end. <laughs> so if y'all think I'm raking in like loads of money. Mask. Oh, your mask, it's okay. There's nobody around, so you can just play without a mask. Yeah. Um, but still, I mean, we don't want coaches to be paid pennies. So of that 99, think about it. Some of it's going to farmers, some of it's going to the research and development and quality control. And then the third is going to pay the people that are going to walk alongside you in your health and fitness journey so that they can care for their families. Y'all, it, it makes sense. And then because of coaching, I am able to live a life of generosity, deeper generosity. So I partner with um, several organizations. One is Harlem Grown. It helps with food, um, food supply here in New York City. Um, and <laughs> I also give to the, uh, the diaconate for, um, clergy women who are struggling at the moment, um, for, through no fault of their own, who might need a scholarship for continuing education or variety of things. So that is how, just a snapshot of how I reconcile faith and business and also kind of why, oh look, oh, it's, Ella's made a friend. <laughs> um. We're in a park here in New York. And she's like friends with all of the gardeners. All right, I gotta go save her. But that is a little bit why um, Shakeology is an investment, why it's worth it for your health and for our community.